Let's talk about chapter seven, physical disabilities and health problems. Again, make sure you're reading this in your textbook because I'm not talking about this in a lot of detail. There's way more stuff in your textbook that you need to be reading over. Physical disabilities are conditions that make it difficult to move around. Um, they interfere with the normal functioning of bones, joints, and muscles. Cerebral palsy is a neurological disorder that results in lack of muscle control, right? The muscles don't move the way they're supposed to, um, and it makes it hard for people to get around. Um, floppy muscles, hypotonicity. Um, so all of these things that we're going to talk about here are physical disabilities that make it difficult for people to move around um, and to um, use their bodies to do things. Spinal cord injuries are when the spinal cord is injured or severed and muscles below the injury don't get the messages that are going from the brain. So um, interestingly enough, um, this can happen, a spinal cord injury can happen from an accident or it can be a developmental issue. I actually um, found out when I was, and my parents found out when I was like 11 or 12 that I had spina bifida. Um, it was very, very um, minor. So what happens is you have vertebrae, you know, in your spine that are bones that protect your spinal cord. And if you have a severe case of it, your spinal cord can be even exposed to the outside or it just, it's not um, protected. And so it results in a, a variety of different things, um, buildup of brain fluid, lack of control over various parts of your body. Mine, nobody even noticed it. And then I had surgery and it was fixed. So muscular dystrophy is muscle, muscle weakening that continues to get worse and worse. Hip dysplasia is um, when your hip moves in and out of its socket. And then rheumatoid arthritis, it's very, very painful um, inflammation around the joints and um, children with RA should be encouraged to move and it usually goes away when they get older. Um, so if you are um, working with a child who suffers from physical disabilities, then you, chances are that child will be working with a variety of different therapists, physical therapists, occupational therapists. A physical therapist is someone who is there to help the child learn how to move or compensate for the physical disability through their movement. Occupational is learning how to do things like um, put your clothes on, that kind of thing. Um, occupational is um, not just your job, but moving you through life, doing those things. Um, you might also be working with speech and language pathologists because sometimes um, a language delay is the result of a um, physical disability in the, the mouth or tongue or the muscles there. Parents and teachers and then psychologists if there are behavior problems. Adaptive equipment. Again, look at your book for this. There's a lot of detail there. Um, you can... Um, alleviate or reduce the effect of physical disabilities a lot by using different devices. So a child who has trouble walking might need braces or walkers or a wheelchair or might need a wedge mat to sit upright, okay? Um, universal design for learning is something that is covered, again, fairly extensively in your book. And it's basically finding that different children learn different ways based on their abilities, disabilities, um, and so we need to figure out the best way to reach every child in the classroom, okay? Manipulative materials, things for people to grab and touch and move around, creative materials, um, larger pencils, paintbrushes, things that it's easier to grip, right? Tape paper to an easel or a table to prevent it from sliding for kids who can't 
hold things down or whatever. Self-help devices, using Velcro instead of buttons, easier to use utensils, suction cups, all kinds of things. Adaptations in the classroom, you want to make sure if you have somebody who's in a wheelchair that they have room to move around, right? Um, put things up so that they don't have to reach down to get them. Um, railings to help children balance. All of these things are um, things that are covered most likely in newer buildings, but in older buildings, they are not. So you need to make adaptations as you can, right? Um, let's see, appropriate amount of time for transitioning. Some children, if you're in a wheelchair, if you're using crutches, um, if you have leg braces, it may take you more time to get somewhere. So it's important that you accommodate for that in your classroom. Some children just are chronically ill and have things that are happening all the time. You know, asthma is a thing that children have trouble with and it can affect how they are able to learn and how they are able to be present in the classroom. So you need to think about how you can help and reach out to those children. Many developmental disabilities involve significant health risks and problems. Asthma, like I said, um, cystic fibrosis, another one where um, it may keep them home. It may um, mean that they need to figure out a different way to attend classes. Hemophilia, that's um, bleeding that doesn't clot. Um, people have to be very careful. Um, leukemia. So anybody who's dealing with any of these things is probably not going to be in your classroom all the time, or when they are, they're going to be um, in a weaker state, or they may need other adaptations to help them out. So um, you need to help them with that. And then you also need to know if children are suffering from these things so that you can watch for um, things that you need to look out for. Is the child having trouble breathing? Is the child tired? How can you help them? Um, diabetes. A lot of people have diabetes, hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia. Sometimes um, your body's um, process of sugar in the blood um, can change the way you behave. So a hypoglycemic or hyperglycemic child may have real behavior problems unless they're eating the right diet at the right times. Seizure disorders, again, these are things that you want to know about so that you are trained to help them um, when they need help. Um, so take a look at all that stuff. We need to know about health problems. We need to be educated. And then you need to make sure that the children in your class who do have health problems, and this um, applies to all health problems and especially food allergies. In preschool, food allergies are the hardest thing because preschoolers can't tell you necessarily about their food allergy. Um, some can, some are real good about it, but this is the, the time it's hardest for parents because they're not in charge, right? They're not there to do snack every day. So they can't control what the snack is. And the child may or may not be able to understand what their allergies are and what they're allowed to have. So you need to be very specific with parents about what are the things that this child is allergic to, what's he allowed to have. And you need to make sure that you have information on file in the classroom and in the director's office so that in case there is a problem, you know what to do. EpiPens, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's also very important that you have that available and you make it known to other teachers and substitute teachers, right? Um, administering medications, EpiPens, if you have one, you need to learn how to use it. It's very important to have EpiPen training. Um, and then talk to the parents, right? So know what they would do if a crisis occurred and what they want you to do and what you need to look for, okay? But you also need to make sure that you understand that a child's health problems are between a child and his doctor and his family 
and um, it's not for you to share with others. Okay, that's chapter seven.